And welcome back to this special Christmas edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacks Miller. Remember our hashtag is TVJ All Angles. Thank you so much for staying with us. This is our special Christmas edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacks Miller, and we're now in Port Maria, St. Mary. We're here to meet Carlton Walters, also known as Kaya, and he's the leader of the Kaya Jonkuna group in the parish. Oh, come meet me. <laughs> oh. Yeah. First of all, tell me your character in the group. Well, this is the wild Indian. Some people call it the Indian chief. No, there are a lot of Jamaicans who don't even know that Jankun is still going on. It's something we see on TV or something you say hear about or you remember from long time. Yeah. So how is it that you guys have managed to keep going? Well, you know, first thing first, it's an inspiration from the ancestor um, since age eight. It's a long story, I don't want to get into it. Because Shorten it and tell me. So, my father brought home a fife back when I was a toddler. That's what you have in your hand? Yeah, right here. Um, my older brothers took it out and was trying to play with it, and they weren't getting a sound. And they didn't want me to fool around with it because they would get in trouble if it break up. So I have to wait until when they leave the yard to go and get a try off of it. So I took up the fife, and the second time I blew in it, it make a sound. And from there, I work the fingers around, and I get a few cards from it. Starting from that year, for five year, a five year period, I've been having dreams from the ancestors. I went outside, my eyes closed, like I said, I was sleepwalking. And then they started to show me everything. Everything that associated with John Kuno. The moves, you know, the, the instrument, how they make it. And, you know, the way they adorn them, themselves. And this was like cake, clay covered their skin. And with streaks of, of white all over. And aprons make out of animal skin. At the age of 13 was the first time I started to play in a Jankuna group. I was playing a bass drum. What about Jankuna drew you to it even as a young boy? I just think that is that encounter. The ancestors wanted me to observe everything, you know, because it seemed as if they chose me to be the person who would lead it up until this time. It's been like 40 years. So from you started at about age 13, you've been playing Jankuna ever yeah. since? Yes. So when did you start this group? Um, I started my own group about 15 years ago, yeah. Did you have difficulty finding people to come and play the different characters? No, because there is always children, you know, teenagers, who are interested in John Kuno. Some of them I have to go and ask their parents if I can permission for, you know, to bring them with me, you know. But there is always support. Because, I don't know, there's something about John Kuno and African descent. The, you know, the, the, the beat of the drums, you know, and the fife, the whole thing, and the excitement out there, the acrobatic skill, you know, it draws the people. A lot of us remember John Kuno from, as I said, when we were young, and you remember the excitement that it created. Do you find the same kind of excitement when your group goes out now? Yes. Yeah, especially when we are in the street, you know, there is excitement. You can hear people from afar, John Kunua come, or Muscarita come, you know, and you can hear the screaming from the children in the yard, you know, and a lot of people are still afraid of it, but they will stay behind their fence and wait until the group pass, 
and then they, they come out because they really want to see what's going on. You know, because a lot of these children only heard from their, yeah. their grandparents or great-grandparents. Yeah, do people you know? still understand the kind of history behind it, uh, like the different characters? So tell me, for instance, the different characters in your group. And we have okay. some of your group members here. So I have a big group, a big group that I split sometimes in two. It's a group of 26. Sometimes we have shows in the hotels and, you know, the date clash and we have to split it, <coughs> you know. Um, the characters I have is all the characters um, plus other ones that we, were, we have created. Remi you know, remind every, me, every remind me of the main ones and then the ones you say okay. you created. So we have the Coed, the Jack in the Green, the Belly Woman, the Pitchy Patchy, the Arsed, the House, the Wild Indian, the Policeman, the Sailor, uh, Octa Boy, the Coed, is an uh, African element of the Jan Kuno, and the Kowed is the reason why Jan Kuno there is. I gave you the story behind that, as the ancestor revealed to me. So the elders were sitting around the fire, the bonfire. You know, it, it was running out of wood, and they sent the children to go and fetch firewood. Um, while coming back, one of the older child saw the carcass of a cow on the ground that they have eaten years before. He took it up, put it on his head, and gave the little ones a scare all the way back to the village. The elders saw it and thought it and laughed about it, and dear John Kuno was born. Wow, really? Okay. Tell me, why do you think it's important that we hang on to the John Kuno? It's a part of who we are. You know, it's a great part of our history. Even during the time when our ancestors were were a slave. This is what they do to keep up their spirit and to take their mind off of what was going on with them. You know, even the same slave masters find it fascinating, fascinated to see them out there, you know, performing during the period of time when they are not working them. And they would have the pregnant lady. That is the reason why you have a belly woman in the John Kuno. They would have the pregnant ladies, enslaved ladies to come on stage and perform for them. Right? There was a time when the, 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 the husband of these pregnant lady decided that we have to plan a strategy to stop them. And they put on the, 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 the clothing of their, their wife. Because you, you know, people wonder why is a man dancing in, in you know, the belly woman and things like that. So they put it on and they would, you know, they would perform for them and then they would, would you know, attack them, ambush some of them. And, but they were a lot. So some of these enslaved people would have to run into the hills. Some of them were captured and killed, tortured. You know, some of the, the pregnant lady, you know, were raped, you know. So it's a, it's a long history about it. So really and truly, when you check it out, the pregnant lady is the real warrior in the John Kuno group. Uh, so which yeah, ones yeah. you say you create? And then we have one we call Mother Fanny. We have one we call Shaggy, um, Featherfoot, you know, Bush Doctor, you know. I, I love then, that idea though, that you say you're creating characters. So you're yes. building on the tra tradition and continuing it. The Europeans used to add the uniform groups to it, you know, to create a float that they used to do. The same person named Kanir, who Add to his name John, John Kanier. He used to hold all of these floats, you know. And the set girls that I forget earlier, that was one of theirs, the Europeans. So do you have, when you bring people into the group, do you have like sessions where you teach them or talk to them about the history of it? Yes, but mainly, mainly how to play the instrument and how to move the movements. You know, Tell the, me about the, the movements, what's special about the movements? Well, John Kuno, the first thing, with John Kuno, you have to bend your back and your, your hand supposed to be out. This is the main, the main um, position of a John Kuno. And you can do a whole lot of different styles with that. You know, Show me, just give me a couple of like, examples. You know, things like that. You know, as well as a whole lot of foot movements, isn't it? What about the costuming? Who does the costuming? Yes. Everything that I wish everybody was here because I would show you from the drum to the fife, you know, to all the costumes, I designed them 
and there were other you ones. You designed all of them? Yes, and there were other ones that were before that were more authentic, you know. But, you know, as, as the years so go by, they So who does the sewing? I do, I did all, all the sewing. What? Yeah. <laughs> you really called yeah. to this thing, man? Yes. So you're training people though, so that if somebody else is here to take it up? Yes, yes. Um, every season, I told them it's soon time for them, you know, and, and I need to find interested people. There are sometimes a particular person will show some interest and another time they don't, mm. you know, so I can't just let it go just like that until I find a real person who cut out for it. I saw a little boy plays five like me, but you know, he's 13, again too, he's 13, just getting into it, you know, so I'm still watching. So in 2021, why do we still need to hold on to all of this? Uh, there are people out there, if they don't see John Cooney, they don't have a Christmas. You know, this has been going on from a long, long time. And, uh, you know, the older folks pass it on. They tell, you know, their grandchildren, their children, their grandchildren, and then their children tell their children, you know, the old story about it. A lot of people haven't seen it. And like you said, you know, it's been a long time, you know, and I think that we should continue it because it's a part of our roots.